So let's go over it. Let's take a look at um, these accumulation distribution lines. Uh, what we want to do is you can put these on any chart, any time frame, and it's going to find the area where the path of least support or least resistance is between the supply and demand lines where you should get speed in between uh, uh, these lines. And so what we can do is let me first show you, I can see where the big gaps in the market are. Um, you're going to be getting this on your own computer. So the best thing I like to do is skinny it down, and I can see right there there's a big gap in the market. So here we have a huge gap over 100 ticks between this level and this level, <clears throat> 2676 to 2788. So I have well over 110 ticks that is a, a path of least resistance. If I break through there with an uptrend and retest it, that would be a really good one. Um, the easy way to do is skinny it down. I like to skinny it down. If I skinny it all the way down, I can see that the path of least resistance recently is right here. 2220, uh, uh, this is a big gap, 2004 to 2060, 2060 to 21, 1948. I mean, you can see the big spaces. When you see big giant spaces like that, it lets you know in the last 30 days that that is going to be a possible big move in the market. Um, in, on just a regular uh, trading day where there's no, uh, what, what that means, if the market was in a downturn or uptrend, it never had any really retracements. So in the last 30 days, these are the retracements that it had on the path of support or resistance. So these lines will automatically draw for you. What we want to do with these lines, they're notorious for calling the highs and lows of the day, uh, the session, but more importantly, we want to use them with trend. So when we trade off of these, we want to look for the trend first. We want to find the trend. Here is the order of importance. These are short setups that happened this morning. We tried to get one just a second ago. It never pulled us in. The five sim is the best way to pull yourself in the market too. Um, on the five sim also, on the trend box, since they work really good, I put a 15 on the trend box only on the five sim. So I'll type that in the room in a minute. You can, you can put your trend box to 15 on the 5 sim uh, because they work really good at the trend lines. But first we've got to find the trend. Here's the order importance with the supply demand lines. Then we're going to find the level. Level are these supply demand lines. Old demand becomes new supply. Old supply becomes new demand. So find the level of supply demand and they automatically plot for you. And if you want to see where the big levels are, you can skinny it down in the morning and just see, like I just showed you a second ago. Then what we want to find is after you find the level, which are these lines that I'm making plot, we want to find speed in the market. We want to see speed picking up through these levels. Through the levels. Then we want to look for a full retracement down here at the full retracement oscillator. And then we want to find an entry with negative market delta or just a red reversal bar or a green uh, candle because that has a trend filter built into it already. And their entry stop is always two ticks above the swing high or swing low. Five will be your entry. So that's the process we want to go through every morning on any type of market. This works on all markets, any time frame. There's your entry. There you're good to, good to go. And then you want to try to take it from level to level. So let's take a look at this short side setup. I have three moving averages on there. First, let's find the trend. Moving averages are worthless by nature, but they're great for trend direction. So I like to use them for trend direction only. So hey, Thomas. Hey, Michael. Hey, Leo. 
<clears throat> so I like using for trend direction. So I got my magenta, my longer term moving move average. I got my smaller moving average. Uh, and then I got my real small moving average in a thin white. If you're, if you are, if the smaller MA is down through the medium, you're in a, you're in a, you're in a possible down move. If you're below all three, you're in a hard down move. So here's the first setup. We, we got trend down. Trend down started right here around 637, 637 on this time frame. And what I want to try to do is at these levels, I just want to try to get an ABC short. And these levels are notorious. Well, it will stop sometimes right to the tick. You're going to see a lot of trades like that where it will stop within a tick or two. But I want to be within a couple ticks. The best ones are it'll stop right to it or exceed it by just a couple ticks. It will just never close back above that level. Because remember, this is an area of congestion the last 30 days. So last 30 days, this is an area that paused the market, which that's what a supply demand line is. Is any type of pause in the market the last 30 days, it's going to average that line out and spit it forward for you for support and resistance. So what I want to do is I want to cut through this level. Whoops. I want to cut through that demand level because I'm in a downtrend. I want to cut through it. I want to retest it. Right? So the trend's down. There's a trend. We found the level right here. 26. You see it on the number over here. 26, 48. Now we got to have speed through the level. Speed is categorized as this. Hey, Earl, with this trend box, remember I changed on the 5 sim, I put it to a 15 trend box. I have a 15 trend box on here because it catches these levels really good. 15 trend box. So my 9 sims a 25 standard. 5 is a 15, and my 3 sim Rinko is a 9 on the trend box on your indicator on your own computers. So what I want to see is I want to see it cut through. I want to see it retest after speed comes in. So speed is categorized by two or one candle close inside of a closed trend box. So this is speed. There's speed coming in the market through this level right here. That's speed. That tells me I'm going to have a great retracement if she, when she pots back up against that demand line that now becomes a supply line. So what I want to do is I want to cut through it. I want to retest it. Then I want to see a full retracement on the bottom oscillator, which is down here. I want to get above that 90%. Now I know I'm at a full retracement. And now I want to look for the entry. The entry will be negative market delta. It caught it right at the high. And there's your ABC short. So you can scale the first level if you're in a hard downtrend, which I'll show you how to categorize that at. You can scale. These levels can be scaled within a couple ticks for entry. So you can use these levels also after entry to scale contracts. They're a little bit more accurate than the symmetry dots on the accuracy of them because the sim dots you see below it add, adds confluence for retracement, selling and buying. Like if it would have hit here was a level where we had speed coming through, two candle close. If it would have came up just a couple more ticks, that would have been a great short right there on a full retracement, it just never made it. Because there's your speed bar, two candle close, it cut through it. It just went all the way zone to zone. That's why it never retraced all the way back up. But they see the symmetry dots are lying right on top of my demand line. So that tells me that's great area to look for a short on a retracement. Okay, so that would have been a great spot. It just never made it all the way up to it. I want to come within a couple ticks of it, retest it, and then we'll get uh, we'll get moving to the downside. All right, so you want to see that level, just like right here on this level. You see how we cut, we, we broke through it with speed. We had a full retracement, but we want to stop right on that demand line that becomes a supply line right at that level for continuation. I want to see it. I want to see the. That's the perfect setup. And you'll see there's a lot. You'll see hundreds of trades where we'll stop right exactly on it, and that will line our trade up. So these are all full retracements this morning. On the five Simrenko, this one is 
actually ideally perfect alignment. That's perfect alignment on a cell setup. And that's your entry. Stop two ticks above the swing high. So that's the process. You want to go trend, find the level, speed through the level, full retracement, entry. And that doesn't change on any time frame. Now, remember on the trend box, I have a 15 trend box here. My trend box is categorized with the trend also. So trend is categorized by moving averages and they're categorized by my trend box color. If my trend box color is red, we're in a downtrend. If I'm in trend box green, we're in an uptrend. So you can see when this turned green, it actually went through my level a little bit. That's why it wasn't a perfect ideal setup because look at this level right here. It was red on the retracement. This level is still red on the retracement. So that's why I want to see trend. I want to see the color the same. I want to see the moving averages in the same direction. And then I want to see speed, a two candle close here, speed, here speed. This actually had speed right here also. Speed at that level. It just never stopped. It was green close inside of my demand line, which is my new, new supply line right there. But that would be a possible setup right there if it happened on my other time frames, which I'll show you. So those are the only spots I like to look at going short the market. There, there, there. Trend, find the level, it automatically plots it. Speed through the level, full retracement, entry. The big level is right here. Check this out, right above us. I got a huge level. So if I break through this level this week, this is the last 30 days. So 27.76, if I cut through that level this week, and I rotate, I got a possible $1,000 per one contract trade set up. You got a 10 to 1 reward to risk ratio right here. Right there. Because how this was developed over the last 30 days, the market went like this when it cut right through it. It went straight up through it with no retracements or it went straight down through it with no retracements. Okay, and that creates a gap in the market. So that's a big tradable gap uh, coming up. Okay, now that's the five sim Renko. The three sim's the same way. The three sim, what we want to do, I like when the symmetry dots line up with it also, but the three sim's the same way. Uh, when you cut, you, you want to go through it, retest it, go through it with speed. You see speed bars, retest it. And you can see these were, this one right here was all red. This is my ideal situation on a three sim right here. That one. Why? Because I'm moving averages are down, but I'm speed bar right there, but it's red still. This one is not because it turned green on the way back up. So see it turned green on the way back up. So what happened was you're in a night not an ideal hard sell-off. That's why I went through the demand line. So if you trade off the three, I like to see them really line up well. That's my ideal situation on a three cent when it's the same color. Okay? So it's the same thing. You want to look for full retracements to the next level. Um, you can use the, uh, the, there is one thing I did add on my trend chart. I added this long-term moving average. This is actually a 225 uh, EMA. 225 EMA. So you can put that on your chart. I like to put on there to, to see if the sentiment of the market has is up or down. Because what I like to do is when this overlaps a demand line or supply line, it typically will bounce the market hard. And it bounces it really hard in either direction. So if, they, if that overlaps with my supply demand, it usually changes the trend. Okay, so you can put that on there if you want. It's at 225, uh, but it's a really neat little way to, you can see we bounced off of it a little bit here this morning. Uh, but it's a good sentiment indicator. Um, a lot of traders use 200-day uh, moving averages. Average, they like to overshoot the 200 by about 25 ticks. So um, I use it uh, uh, 225 if you want to put that on there. It's up to you. You don't have to have it on there because you see the trend was down here. The speed. Um, this is my main trend chart right here, and how I like to use it with these other smaller charts is that I like to see speed through this level. And this is a one candle close. If you look. If I blow this up, when you see a one candle close coming through, <clears throat> a one candle close coming through, 
that means there's going to be weakness in the market. That's a one candle close on a larger time frame. You see that bust through there, and here's a one candle close too. There's major speed in the market. Look for that five or three seven to pull you in, and that's the best way to line that trade up. We'll skinny it down here a little bit. So those two levels coincide with these entries over here. Break, retest, continuation. Okay, break, retest, continuation. All right, so that's how we want to do it. Old demand equals supply, old supply equals good demand. So we're at a critical level right now on crude because of look at market, and then I have market profile over here to the right also. Um, this to help you out with support and resistance. This takes all the volume in the market, the blue line. The blue line is the most volume that's traded. That actually was a retest short on market profile. But I like to use it because the market profile will sometimes line up with these supply demand lines right to the almost within a couple ticks or exact ticks sometimes. And we can see that we're on support down here. So I know if I break through 2565, I've cleared my market profile also. This is going to be a good level right here to trade a retest short right here. It's going to be a nice little level right there to trade off of that one. So if I break that level, I broke through market profile too. And it's going to be a strong level to look for a retest short. Right now, this one is trying to break through this minor demand line. Not really a great level because we're right on support. All right, we're right on support. So that's how market profile can help you out. It just gives you an added feature with the system to let you know if, uh, if you're in a support or resistance area to look for a, um, a retest short or retest long. So when it lines up, you got some really nice trades. So just try to think uh, ABC longs or shorts off these levels. Uh, this is a strong level right here, 25, 20, 2564 that we got to be aware of this morning. We get through 2564, we should have a nice break, retest, and this market should get rolling more to the downside. Uh, the other thing to do is um, you can look at on this trend chart, the other important thing is that the top trades are at full retracement. So when I see a full retracement on the 9 cent, and if it's butting right up against, let's say this is a full retracement, and let's say this line is butting up against, this is how you can get the higher low of the market sometimes, sometimes even the session higher, session low. If it's butting right up against a supply and demand line, and I'm at a full retracement, that typically will be a swing high, swing low, major one, when that's at a full retracement. Um, or if it's in a hard downtrend, that will be a great retracement trade. So I like to watch that 9 sim oscillator. When it gets above this 90%, it usually indicates a nice little move down to the downside. Okay, so Gerald, go over to the S&P 500 real quick. So the big one on the S&P 500, if you noticed, on um, when we break through is right here. If you, you take a look at, let's just take a look at the retest shorts. And we've been in a hard trend downtrend on the S&P, but I can clearly see right here at 740, this is a really good trade. I mean, it really cranked out. Look at all. Look at my red trend box. This is a 15 trend box with speed. Here's my speed bars that came in on the S&P. Take a look at that. Stopped almost. I think it stopped right to the exact tick on that demand supply line. Then it came down to it, and we had another big one right here. Speed came through. We had another big retracement, and it caught that level right there, right within one tick on the S&P 500 too for that big giant move down. So, and they were at full retracement. So it doesn't matter what market you, you trade off of, it's the same type of scenario. You wanna look for a break, a retest, and a continuation on a full retracement. And once again, the full retracements on the larger time frame that will provide you with the optimal setup, especially on the S&P. We can see that the full retracement level here with the two candle close, right at that high was your optimal time to get short the S&P right against 2795.75 because it was at a full retracement above 90% and it hit within one tick of my demand supply line. The next one right just above it, it was a perfect full retracement up here too on my larger time frame and that was a big giant move in the S&P here at 755 this morning. Um, that was at 2802.75. It came within one tick of the uh, old demand, now supply line, and that was a big one. But look at the trend. I'm below my larger uh, 
to, uh, all my moving averages, that's trend hard down. So if it's trend hard down like this, my larger, there's my uh, largest, larger, intermediate, and my smaller moving average, that's just, you want to take break retest trades on the way down. Okay. If we plot the 7 a.m., do we have to replot? No, these will be on 24 hours, Ernie. I have this thing plot in 24 hours. Yeah, you don't have to. It don't matter what time you turn it on. It's going to plot automatically for you. What it'll do, you'll notice during the day, it may draw a new one during the day when a new one comes up. Yep. So a new supply demand line comes up, it'll draw an intraday for you. It, it doesn't have to wait to the close. You got it. So I want to see us. I want to see us at these full retracement levels are the best on the nine sim. You can see where the spots were in the market when it butts up against it. Those are your most optimal times to pop in. Right now, we got to wait for the uh, crude, crude oil to get below that 25.64 20, 25, level. 